All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. Oh, I'm just Mopar Joe. Um, this is going to be 413 build part one. Uh, we'll make it to where we make it. Hopefully you saw the introduction last time. If not, go back and check that out. I'd appreciate it. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so here's our 413. You'll see I just left my piece of cardboard on top. I was using it to kind of shield my paint, keep it out of the valley and all that. Anyway, if any overspray got in the cylinders, see if you can see any. Basically, you can take your finger or a rag and just wipe it out because paint doesn't stick to oil very well. You'll remember I oiled all these. See, there's a little shade right there. Wipes right out. I'll clean those before the, the uh, pistons go in. But anyway, I'll get this dude flipped over. I gotta start on the bottom. It's the way I always do it. This is a 70 model block, 10, 15 of 70. That's always interesting, I think. It's got the the ridges or ribbing here for strength. Really like that. Our holes. I'll get those cleaned out first. I've got a little set of brushes from, I think they're actually from Harbor Freight. doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to run through each one of these holes. Uh, be careful where they go through for the cam bearing. Be sure that I'm not scarring or scuffing anything. And then I will roll her back over, roll her back over, and clean out our holes here and here for the um, rocker arms, rocker shafts, oil through those two from that back bearing. That's kind of where we'll where we'll start. My goal, I think, for the end of today, get the crankshaft cleaned up, bolted in, installed, all that good, all that good jazz, and start building an engine you know but like I said we'll get to where we get I'm not rushing anything when you rush a job like this it tends to uh, go poorly for you so so here's my brush pretty small shouldn't be too aggressive I've got here some remember my brake parts cleaner I want to be sure my brush is cleaned out before I use it and I'll just go real easily feel my way through Yeah, it's nice and clean. See straight through it. I mean, I can see through all these, but safety precaution. See it? Even my brush is still super clean. I did, you know. Watch this a lot the other day. Good to go. Let me roll it over. Remember our hole here. I'm going to reach my hand in one way or another. I just like to feel where the brush is going. Remember I cut these out so I, I have no chance of destroying my fingers as I'm building this engine now. She's clean. This is my most favorite blowgun because it has a small tip and a rubber to kind of seal off your holes. I can go through like this. And this. Good to go. I actually blow. Oh yeah.
Cheese. Nice. So what I'm doing, I'm going to go set it back down. I'll go ahead and get this sucker cleaned up. I know it came just came from a machine shop, but if you look closely, she's still dirty. See that? So that kind of crap's got to get cleaned. I got a couple cans of brakes, parts cleaner, um, lint-free rags. These are actually like they used to be somebody's jogging pants or something, but pretty soft, um, so they won't scratch up my journals. I'll go with this dude here. dirty. Clean it out best way you can. How about that? we are. That dude's good to go. Need to do the other side. She's getting better. So bad.
now I can shoot through all my holes. I'll shoot through, blow, shoot through, blow. I'm going to put my rag on the other side. Remember my brush. Careful. Uh-huh. Definitely black coming out of there. Then I rinsed it out into the rag. That hole is good. Let's give her a See to it, it's very clean. And now we keep going. So we've done that one. Go to this. Uh -huh. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna call my final step. Got my new rag, like some kind of microfiber. I'm gonna spray it and I'm gonna hit every journal all the way around all the way down. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. After I'm done with that, I can take my blow gun one more time and blow through the holes all the way. And that way I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt. No issues. Start on big boy here. And I can always visually inspect. I recommend visually inspecting everything. Just in case it didn't happen at the machine shop like you wanted it to. There can be no confusion. I found freeze plugs laying in the bottom of motors before. like a Jenga tower.
last step, I'm going to take this flashlight and look straight through every hole. I'll even show you. See that beautiful light? That means that sucker is clean as a whistle. Straight through there. I can see it. Y'all might not can through the camera, but clean as a whistle. You don't have to look if you don't want to, but how will you really know that they're clean if you don't? Uh -huh. Time for something fun and exciting to happen. I'm going to go ahead and shoot my rag here and wipe out every one of these areas where the bearings will go. Get that rusty film off there. I do know certain people that actually put lube this with motor oil before they put their bearings in. I don't do that. You can if you want to. I like mine to be super clean and dry. Dry, dry, dry as a powder house. That's just how I roll, I guess. Go to a new part of my rag here. And I put some gloves on. My fingers were getting cold from all the brake parts cleaner absorbing into them so it'll probably help me help help keep me from getting cancer as fast get that wiped and that wiped and lay down in here wipe that out one good time where the main seal goes Look at that. Yep. Why not again? It's not like it's important or anything. I like to wipe all these surfaces, be sure there's no funk that could keep them from properly clamping here is the rear main seal cap so this cap will only go one way see these kind of 45s here they go towards the back which is nice Then when your oil pan goes on, it will line all that jazz up. I believe these take a 3 8 12 point socket. I'll look at that in a minute. These are the blue things. Go on the side of this seal. Came in the kit. As I'm putting the crank in, I'm going to glue these in. I've got some yellow dog. I'm going to glue these to the cap. Kind of get a little compression going on them. And that way when it's time to drop it in, they'll go in nicely. And I can go ahead and put my seal in here. There's only one right way of doing that, and I'll show you. Let's see. So for this build, here's what I'm referencing. This is the How to Rebuild Big Block Mopar. I believe it's by Svindon, Svindson, however you say that. Anyway, you can get it on Amazon. I think I got this at uh, some bookstore. But... It mentions doing the rear main like I've always done the rear main. Right here, the seal has a lip on top which must face towards the front of the engine. The oil pressure pushes that lip outward, thus creating a continuous seal. If the rear seal is installed, the lip facing rearward, blah, blah, blah. So spread silicone evenly in the rear main seal groove. As you lay the seal in the groove, have one end sitting above the block so you can slide the seal into position flush with the block on both ends. Right, so here's a picture. This is exactly how I've always done it. And they end up being flush. They don't sink one down and raise one up and all that. You can do that if you like. Totally fine. If yours leaks, mine doesn't. Or if mine leaks and yours doesn't, we'll probably never tell each other. 
So if this one leaks, I guarantee I'll show it on the channel. For sealer on this, I'm using the Ultra Gray Permatex. It's kind of supposed to be a little bit better than black. And here's our seal from the Fail Pro Kit. P91020-1. You can take them out and look at them if you'd like. See which way the seal is. See that? The oil is going to run into it like that. It's going to hit it. So if we put it this way, it'll just blow out. So we don't want that. I'll give it a test fit before sealing it. Looks like she's going to be good to go. I'll put my other half on the table. So what I'll do for this, I'm going to crack my tube open. Brand new stuff. Put a little dab. I can actually put, put some dots. There we go. Okay. Then I'll take my pinky. A little pinky. Give it a smear. All the way around real even like. Very nice. So my idea here is that I don't want too much that it squishes out onto the surface of the seal. And I don't want too little that it doesn't help the seal seal. If that makes sense. So there's my seal one more time. The big lip goes to the inside. I know it's I get tired of hearing that, but that's okay. And there it is. Boom, pal, boom. You got to have that in before you drop the crank. Well, you don't have to have it in before you put the crank in. I like to put it in before you put the crank in. You can roll it in later if you want to. Had a little bit of sealer get that inside thing there. It is much easier to put this seal in right now than it is laying on your head later underneath a car and redoing it or truck. There you go. Now I'm getting some beautiful red tacky grease I'm putting on the lip of that seal. Very nicely. Just like that. Mm -mm -mm. That's beautiful. And that way, when the crank goes in, it won't be a dry surface there. Engine tech bearings. They are made in Israel, uh, BC405JSTD, and the STD stands for standard. So knowing that your crank is standard, you should also look for it on the back of every bearing. It says STD on there as well. I always look my bearings over. I've already wiped these with my brake parts cleaner and a clean rag, but looking for any chips or deformities around these edges anything like that that could cause you an issue with your crankshaft I do that first thing so I can go ahead and get to rolling here notice I'm starting in the center at the thrust bearing I like to start my notch first and then push down from the other side there we go so instead of using a screwdriver this time, I've got a wooden paint stick. I'm just going to push down a little bit here, be sure that I'm lined up. A lot of guys say you don't have to do this, that the cap will compress it down, all that. I understand. I get it. Um, I just kind of do things my own way, I guess. You've got to have all these bottoms in first. You'll notice the hole goes down towards the bottom right and the other four one two three four are all the same size so again it says standard find my notch drop in our notch push it around just like that standard here we go Get my mix on. 
Oh, that brush is fancy. Man, I appreciate it, Herman. I can even brush the front and rear of these thrust bearings. It's pretty important that they get lubed. Very nice. Coming right along. Here comes the fun part. Dropping her down. I guess my, I've done that before or something. Give her a little turn. All right. I'll explain the process. This is how he's doing it with the book. Start with the main cap number three, which is a thrust bearing. Get the bolt started in the block. Turn the crank about a half turn. Make sure it spins freely. If all looks good, use your torque wrench, torque the cap 35, then a rubber mallet, hit the crank toward the front of the engine. So we'll just tap it in the back. And turn the crank half turn, make sure it spins freely. I'm, I'm the type that I'll spin a crank a hundred times while I'm putting it in just to be sure there's no binding of any kind. Next torque sequence, 70 foot pounds. Hit the crank again with a rubber mallet. Make sure it spins freely. And then 100 foot pounds is if you have the ARP bolts. We're going to 85, so 35, 70, 85. There is that lubed cap. Once y'all be sure I lubed both sides of the thrust bearing. Now, if you're not sure where the numbers go, they, they're numbered um, one through five. I always put my notches together. See the notch, notch goes to the notch side, just like that. Drop her down. Nice. Now, take that same brush, put a little bit on my threads, and put a little bit on that cap head. Just like that. Same thing here. Little on the threads. Little on the face of the top of the cap. There we go. Get them. Be sure they're both started nicely. Get out my trusty hammer. Give it a tap down. Hear that sound? That means it's there. Yep. There that there it is. Got out Drew's fancy snap-on vibrating torque wrench. I'm gonna put her at 35 as described. Hey. I can't find my rubber hammer. Here's a block of wood. And a tiny hammer, how about that? Same thing. Okay. This be number two. Notch to notch. Smear some there and there. I did my bolt threads already. There we go. Oh 
Bring it back up. Number four. See, now my numbers are in a row. Two, three, four. We'll actually rotate that around out of my way just a little bit. And this has all been lubed. I lube every time. Might use too much lube. I don't know. There's no such thing. Start my bolts. Smear a little oil. cap. Notice I've got it locked in my vise here. If I can't get it out. It's been locked just like that. See I glued these in with my yellow dog. To get this dropped in remember your 45's go towards the back just like that and if you flipped over your lip big lip would be facing forward this has already been pre-red greased, right? So, I just want to look at it, test fit it for a second. I know it's going to be tight, tight, tight. A lot of times it's good to lube, lube these blue seals just a little bit with some of your assembly lube. And on silicone here and here, also the bottoms of these, right? I don't want any oil seeping out of this engine. If you're scared to use oil, you can use silicone on the side of these two. Just a real light, thin, something like that. Anything will help lube and slide them in. They're probably going to be a pain, but it is what it is. Our dollop on there and our dollop on there. A little bit here and there. We don't want it to land on our seal. So, me putting it on the cap is essentially the same as putting it down here, but oftentimes you can't get your silicone tube into there.
can see right here I got some squished out which is nice I'm gonna roll that part of the crankshaft just a little bit more so that gap I can perfectly see I'm gonna take some Permatex on my fingertip smear it straight across there might need to go down just a little bit more of that crank just like that nice now as y'all are not judging me still not judging me I appreciate it I'm gonna take this tube of Permatex and fill that entire gap in watch me I believe that's what they call cheap insurance Just like that. Take my finger, just like it's a bead of caulk in the bathtub. Pushing it into the crack and pulling it up. Just like that. In the grand scheme of things, this is cheaper and easier than having to redo this. I'm push down one time. So not only does the oil have to get past the blue seal, it's got to get past my giant bead of gray Permatex sealant. Same thing on this side. I'll roll my crank around. Come here, boy. Yep. It's nicely squeezed out there. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just like that. I'll roll this dude back up a little bit. Like that. Fill it in. If you don't do yours like that, I'm fine with it. I'm just showing you how I do mine. Y'all let me know in the comments what you think about it. I greatly appreciate y'all watching. Final thing, I need to torque these two down. 30 foot pounds. Two down to 30 foot pounds. I got out my old Harbor Freight special here. I'll be getting close. There it is. That is it. Crankshaft still spins freely. Sure does. It is now installed in the engine. And of course, we've had to measure crankshaft in play. The book says, or that book says, two to seven thousandths. So, I've got her pulled back one way, as far as I can here, There's to the zero. We can look and see what this one is. One, two, three, four, five. About five, five and a half. So, send her back. Five and a half is good. Crank's still nice and tight. 
I'm just Mopar Joe, and I appreciate y'all watching.